Hello, welcome back to Med and Me. Um, today we are joined by Dr. Periri. Hi, this is Aditya Periri. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for coming. Um, so we'll get started now. So what is your doctorate type? Uh, I completed an MD. Nice. And um, what's the specialty you work in? I'm currently in cardiology. Um, I am a upcoming or rising third year cardiology fellow. Mm -hmm. And where do you work? I work in Southern Colorado uh, in a city called Pueblo. And the hospital I work at is Parkview Medical Center. And um, what was the required education to become a cardiologist? Yep. So to become a cardiologist, um, and just a doctor in general, is quite long. Um, so for me, um, I completed a, a bachelor's of science degree at uh, University of Virginia. After four years there, I um, took an interesting route. In fact, I actually worked for Epic, the electronic medical record company. Um, and my hope was to learn the backside of medicine and how the medical charting and everything worked. So I worked there for one year and then went to medical school in the Caribbean at St. George's University. So uh, that program was two years in Grenada, the island, and then two years in the different spots in the United States for clinical training, years three and four. But my, my training was primarily in, um, in the area of New York and, uh, like Long Island area. And then my, in, I then went to do an internal medicine residency at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital in Northern Detroit. After my three years there, I did a, uh, another first, my first fellowship was in vascular medicine at the University of Virginia. And then I went on to do cardiology. So a little longer than some, I guess. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did that like unique path um, affect how you think about cardiology or um, change your view on becoming a doctor in any way? Oh, absolutely. I think the path I ended up pursuing made me a very, really changed my mindset and made me a really unique physician. Um, you know, going to school in the Caribbean, I think really made me a grounded individual. And then having training in multiple spots all over the place, especially different countries and different states has kind of opened my eyes in medicine of the different parts of America and the different type of patients that exist. So I think it really helped provide a unique set of perspective. And of course, the training itself, I think I bring a lot to my fellowship right now, having already finished a fellowship. So um, I think I'm a really, you know, a diverse uh, cardiologist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so then what was your motivation to choose cardiology specifically? So for me, I chose cardiology because I did a vascular medicine fellowship and I felt that that focused on the vascular system and the, the, the periphery. And I still wanted to complete learning about the heart and the central vascular system. So after finishing cardiology, I felt like I'm going to be a really good comprehensive cardiovascular physician, knowing all of the plumbing essentially in the body and how to manage that. Um, I really enjoy cardiology because you can impact patients pretty quickly and you see that the benefits of your work, if you treat their blood pressure, the blood pressure gets better pretty quickly. So that turnaround time is pretty quick. So I feel a lot of satisfaction to be able to help my patients. Another thing is I think technology. Technology is, has developed a lot and there's a lot that we can do for our patients and all the procedures that are out there in the, in the world of cardiology. And I think that's very exciting. I'm a, I'm a big techie, so I think it's very exciting. And, um, and lastly, I think there's a lot of physiology that happens in cardiology. You know, there's a lot of uh, like hemodynamic parameters you're watching when you're treating a patient. And it keeps me very um, excited and interested, which that's why I like. Yeah, that's nice. Was there any other specialty you had in mind, like besides cardiology? I thought about maybe pulmonary critical care uh, as another uh, specialty because that or emergency medicine, because you have to be quick on your feet. You're thinking there's a lot going on. Uh, you're very hands-on, but uh, I felt that cardiology ended up being the most interesting and, and, and best aligned with my personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so what is the required like residency and fellowship time um, after med school to become a cardiologist? For cardiology, you have to complete a three-year internal medicine track, and then you have to um, apply for cardiology. Mm, nice. 
So typically people end up doing some more rotations within cardiology um, towards the later part of their in IM residency uh, to build up their interest. Mm-hmm. So could you possibly walk us through a typical day of a cardiologist? Absolutely. So for my work day, there's two environments I work in. It's both in the hospital and in the clinic. So I'll start off with the clinic, for example. Um, work usually starts around like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we start seeing patients go, goes around till noon or so. Uh, we have a little bit of break to catch up on, you know, reading imaging tests. And then a clinic resumes around 1 and goes on till about 5 p.m. So the clinic is a really nice uh, environment. You have a lot of imaging modalities being done. You have um, uh, different echocardiograms, nuclear stress tests. You have, you know, depending on the facility, you may have uh, additional CT machines. And then you see a lot of patients throughout. So there's a, it's a little different stuff happening throughout the day, which I really like. It's calm. And um, I do also work in the hospital. Well, hospital is a little bit more... Um, fast paced and uh, a lot of dynamic things happening. So I usually also come to the hospital around seven to seven thirty. Uh, we, uh, I quickly see a list of patients that I'm assigned that will go till maybe uh, one to two hours in duration. I'll see them, get histories, examine them, make some assessment and plans. And then as a fellow, I still rotate um, and round with my senior physician. So we'll talk about our patients, formulate some good plans, and then go see them at bedside. Um, physically. And then after all the plans are set up, I usually work on some documentation and we should have a break around noon. And, um, you know, if there's any emergencies that come through, we still have to kind of attend to those. But, you know, we're kind of continues following up on the treatment plans that you kind of set up and how the patients are responding to those. And I usually wrap up around 4 to 5 p.m. And then if you're on call, you know, cardiology can be a little bit longer and you're on call till the next morning. So, um, it kind of depends on how call goes. And um, for the listeners, could you explain what being on call means? For sure, yeah. So being on call uh, basically means that around 5 p.m. or so, you'll get a list or a sign up from your colleagues. And then you'll go ahead and then um, just have a pager available to you. And call starts around 5 p.m. And home, call can be in different environments. You can be uh, at work call or you can be home call. And depending on that, you kind of figure out your system. So if you're on home call, like our system, you are able to answer pages and phone calls from home. You provide any guidance you can for the ER doctors, internal medicine doctors, whoever needs help. And then if the patient's really sick, you may have to go into the hospital to go help that patient out. And um, then you'll come back. And if there are any other emergencies, you have to return again. So it can be a busy night or it can be a calm night. So it kind of just depends on the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so... What would you say are some pros of your job then? I really like cardiology because it's um, th- there's a big breadth of pathology. There's a lot of different diseases that you see, and you have to really think through the different mechanisms and treatment options. So it's not an, a very obvious answer, which I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of technology that's in cardiology, which I think is very exciting. Um, there's been a lot of technological advancements in the worlds of you know interventional cardiology, EP, uh, general cardiology and imaging. So I think it kind of keeps things interesting. And the, I'm a, I like to kind of move quickly. Uh, so I think the pace of cardiology matches well as well for me. Um, it's a quick pace field. So you, it kind of matches uh, me. So it's a good, it's, it's a good uh, part of the work. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like a very like um, personal match to you. Yeah, it worked out nicely. Mm -hmm. So would you say there's any cons of your job? I would say the the field of cardiology itself is quite um, fast paced. um, And the the illnesses are pretty severe. So you have to be ready to handle high acuity diseases. So if you need more time to think and you don't like to be in a stressful environment, it can be kind of challenging. Um, so it does demand a lot. So that can be a bit stressful. Um, but if it matches you and, and it matches the way you like to work, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good um, you know, work-life balance still. Call can be busy as well. There's some nights where you, know, you get a lot of questions from uh, hospital staff and colleagues. So you, it does require a lot of you if you're on call sometimes. So the, depending on where you work and uh, how their call setup is, it can be quite stressful for cardiologists. 
So you can, you can, but the good thing is, um, as I'm learning about the job market, there's a lot of variation, so you can find a good fit for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, um, would you say there was a certain experience you had in your career that changed your mindset about it, like whether for good or bad? I think there's probably two moments of that. Probably the first one is going to medical school in the Caribbean. I think it really made me a grounded physician and understanding that there's a lot of the world that doesn't have um, a lot and they work with very little. And I think it made me a very uh, kind of humble and um, and grounded physician. And I think that's really important. And I think the second moment was, I think some of my colleagues and friends who I trained and worked with, you know, they've, you know, I think it premises the point that medicine demands a lot from people. Um, it, you sacrifice a lot and you push yourself a lot. So as a result, I think it, doctors in training can have a lot of issue with anxiety or be very stressed out. And I think an important, you know, um, word, a piece of wisdom that my friend taught me was, you know, you, you can try like 110% and that's all you really can give. So don't worry too much more beyond that. So, you know, I definitely, you know, was very stressed out at the beginning, but I learned to just work as hard as you can and give it your best and kind of see where, ha- what happens. And I think it's been a good, uh, um, good piece of, uh, wisdom that my friends helped me with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, I know like a lot of students, like they hear about how difficult it is being a doctor. Um, is it possible to have like a good work-life balance with it? I think so. I think there's a lot of, once the training finishes and you find the type of training that you're, that matches your personality, I think it'll be fine. And then when you look for a job, you find a different type of job that has, you know, the, the criteria you're looking for. So there are, there's some cardiology jobs that are extremely demanding. Some are a little bit more relaxed, more outpatient. So I think there's a little bit for everybody. So I think there's always something you can find. Mm-hmm. And, um, Speaking about like finding specialties, what kind of person would you recommend this specialty for? I I think the student who would be interested in cardiology or the the resident who would be interested in cardiology would be someone who is driven, very motivated, not, you know, doesn't need to be spoon fed. uh, You know, you have to be driven kind of to look and uh, to learn about these things yourself someone who's very quick thinking and also someone who's very adaptable. So I think these are important characteristics that will make a good cardiologist. Mm -hmm. So do you have any particular tips for high schoolers if they're interested in cardiology? I think the important thing for high schoolers and college students, um, even if you don't mind me saying, Mm -hmm. is that I think it's very important to have a broad education. And I think that, you know, medicine is obviously a lot of science and you should be science heavy, but I think, you know, everyone should be very well-rounded and it's important to pursue other interests as well. I think we get very busy focusing just on medicine and science. So it should be that, you know, if you're interested in business a little bit, or if you're interested in art, like you should be well-rounded. So I think it brings a lot to the type of doctor you are and makes you unique and maybe able to relate to your patients a little better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, this is just an additional question. Um, How do cardiologists interact with other um, medical professionals in the hospital? Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, You're breaking up. um, How do cardiologists interact with other medical professionals in the hospital, like pharmacists and nurses? Oh, that's a great question. I think the way we interact is multifold. Number one, uh, for example, with the pharmacy staff, you may have multidisciplinary rounds. In the ICU, you may be having them advise you on certain medications, the medication interactions for the medications that your patients are on. Um, for example, with plum crit staff, you're you know rounding on those patients in the ICU, so you're giving sign out you know face to face. Um, you know, internal medicine doctors may require consultation on their patients. So then you'll go see these consults and advise them, you know, with your expertise, what they should do. Um, so I think there's a very collegial environment. Um, I think the biggest individuals you work with as a cardiologist end up being CT surgeons and vascular surgeons as well. There's a lot of vascular disease that we all as a team, as a cardiovascular team deal with. So those are probably the biggest relationships you have in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for explaining that. And so that is all the questions I have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Peruri. Of course, thank you so much for having me.